Good morning. As you, as you might have seen, I, we're going on a, a different travel today. We're, we're uh, taking a wee walk up to the Glassford Parish. Uh, you might notice that uh, things changed last week. You can now walk five miles uh, from your Sure area for exercise. Uh, that doesn't mean traveling away to Loch Lomond and going for a five mile walk, but that's five miles from your own property. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm taking a wee walk just outside the parish for the first time uh, since the, the lockdown. Uh, I'm going to take you up to the Standing Stones. So, hi, here we are, Glassford Bridge. Just to let you see the, the water. Uh, not so sunny today with a bit of rain yesterday. Uh, and there's been uh, the waters a bit higher than uh, normal. Uh, just look over the other side. Many have travelled over this bridge before, but never taken the time to actually maybe walk it. It's a lovely bit of the river. Uh, in fact, I once met a man here uh, on the bridge. He told me about a stone in the water here, and I can't remember which one it is, but uh, it's one of the larger ones in the centre. And he said it's called Target Hole. Uh, and all the all, all the, the the fishing spots in the they even have got a name. Uh, and this target hole can intrigue me. Ask him was it a target for the you know the fly fishers? He says no, no, it was uh, for the military. He says oh, in what way? He said uh, well there used to be a a local rifle volunteers force, and that was raised in the 1860s. The Lancashire Rifle Volunteers, and they had a contingent out this way of which Glasford had members. And uh, they used to uh, take fire practice at a stone in the river here, and that's why it's called Target Hole. See, find out something new every day. Well, watch I don't drop this in the even here, I'll never get it back again. Uh, <laughs> last week I dropped this in the water, and I was surprised to be able to recover most of what I've got, but uh, it's cracks right across the, the back. Anyway, not to worry. Yep. So, hi, on the, the, the river here, uh, as you cross the bridge, not a bonus bridge, however, uh, there were some other bridges here before. Uh, I like so many uh, in Stonehouse, Linter Bridge, and there was one further down from Linter Bridge, it was swept away in 1771. Uh, this bridge also got swept away in a flood, I think it was about, I think it's around about the 1930s, I can't remember the exact date. Just over to your right here, if you go along the haven there, there was also the remains of lime kilns there as well, which were on the opposite bank uh, of the, the the lime kilns, which are at Cock Castle. So uh, there was a large stream of lime there, so that's why they went there. So I uh, a wee bit of climb the day, and uh, <laughs> just realised it's going to be raining, and I forgot my jacket. So I'm off to a good start. Anyway, so I'm going to take you up just a wee bit further. Turn this off, and then I'll take you to the turn where we will be uh, heading up towards the Standing Stones of Glassford. Uh, some of you might have uh, seen a copy. I downloaded. I enabled a free download uh, of the Glassford book on Sunny Stonehouse and in the Glassford site recently. Uh, that'll give you a history of Glassford, but. Uh, I'll tell you a few things later on, but uh, Glassford itself is quite an interesting wee place because Glassford, the name, actually used to refer to the name of the parish rather than the village. In fact, uh, for many, many years it was known as West Quarter. But without going into the detail of why that changed, of which the locals weren't happy at the time, Today with the train station and the, the post office, but anyway, I used to have one S instead of two S's. Anyway, uh, West Quarter was the name for many a year uh, until the train came. Uh, postal office uh, had issues with uh, the, the postcodes and whatever, and they decided to rename the village of West Quarter as Glassford, uh, which was probably a surprise to everybody at the time. No consultation on it. But uh, the parish of Glassford actually covered uh, the villages of Chapelton and Heads as well, which is just a kind of there's wee farmsteads up there, but it's a much bigger village, 150 200 years ago. So it's quite an extensive parish and an ancient parish as well, just like Stonehouse. 
So aye, it's worth a donner. And there's plenty to see there if you know what you're looking for. So, hi, I'll get you up the hill a wee bit further on. I'll tell you a wee bit more at the, the tune. Hi there. Uh, unfortunately, my my flip has indeed broken. Uh, I'm just heading up the brae again there. That's us looking over to the gatehouse at Muirburn. Uh, quite interesting. Uh, uh, Muirburn was a fantastic big house which uh, unfortunately uh, was blown up. Uh, I believe that was back uh, during the Warriors. Uh, any notes for in the day, but what happened is the I think it was Mr. Alston, I can't remember his first name, but Mr. Alston who stayed at Muirburn. Unfortunately, uh, like so many property owners, uh, allowed undermining uh, for minerals extraction, and there was subsidence in the, the, the property, as it was at Hamilton Palace as well. Some of the property owners get just too greedy. And his mines, of course, uh, gave way, flooded, etc. And these large uh, baronial buildings uh, slowly collapsed over time and it was eventually blown up. You can still see the remains there. Uh, and I'd be taking a donor on another day. There's a walk that goes up there which is quite popular uh, with local folks here. Uh, so, I uh, Glassford, you can just see it in the distance. There. Uh, I'm going to get in. Yeah. There we go. There's the kirk, or the new kirk, uh, and the, the village there. And the village of Glassford, the earliest mention we've got of it actually dates to uh, 1210. Uh, it's also got a mention in the Ragman's Roll as well, uh, 1296. So it's an ancient place, and uh, there's still signs of some antiquity around about there as well. Uh, well, some of you might not know, but uh, there used to be a castle at Glassford. And then Reverend Langan, who was an old minister of the, the village, I think it was in 1835, wrote about the, the castle. And he says there was a castle there where you could draw up 100 men under its archway. Now, I'm not sure you could even draw 100 men up under Edinburgh or Stirling Castle, but uh, he seemed to suggest it was a castle of some size. Uh, and certainly, uh, it was still in evidence at that time, but by about 1877, there was nothing left of it. Uh, apart from that, is, there are uh, remains of a ditch which shows the site of it, uh, just behind uh, a property which is called Hull Hill. It's just the countryside looking at towards Straven there. Aye, uh, so the castle. Very prominent in its day, and I suspect they probably dated back uh, probably to the time of the, the Wars of Independence, I think, in the 13th, 14th century. And the earliest date I think I've got the castle itself around about 1540, but it's certainly older than that. Uh, we may never know. Uh, there's said to be a tunnel up there, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I like Stonehouse, we've never been able to find it. The one at the old graveyard. Uh, so Hull Hill House is still there, that's listed, and uh, the castle's just behind it. In fact, it's surprising how many folk in Glassford didn't know it was there, which was quite surprising. Our crack big field there, that's where we're going. You'll see a wee, a wee pen closure here, up the top there, that's called Tapped Hill. That's where we're heading. That's the right way it takes you up there. It's lovely. That's where we're heading today. Hope the cows are not in the field. Aye, so uh, back to the castle. The castle, uh, believe it or not, was actually, while I was doing some research, I discovered, uh, unbeknown to uh, the existing records, that there used to be a Napoleonic prison there. Uh, and this dated back to the when there was uh, Napoleonic Wars were going on, uh, you had invited folk for uh, Glassford that actually fought uh, in Napoleonic Wars. I've got some records of that. And uh, some of the prisoners were actually sent back, the French prisoners, believe it or not, to Scotland. There were several prisons. Uh, I believe there was one, certainly bigger, Perth. Uh, I think there was, a few, there was, it was quite a few, uh, four or five in Scotland. But this one wasn't recorded, uh, but I found a record of it now. Which is great because it's good to add to the, the history 
why they sent to prisoners out to Glassford I'll never know but they were allowed to stay within the parish but not leave and uh, they weren't confined as uh, you would expect in fact some of them were actually paid for doing work as well uh, and used their skills uh, to assist uh, the locals here uh, and I wonder often wonder how many might have actually chose to stay here if they had nothing to get back to the us anyway so hi I'm rambling on again as you'll notice is you, you've got the choice when you get to this junction here that's uh, most pro folk probably got that way glass up uh, I say the glass up and that's that's what it's called Glassford is its Sunday name that's uh, it says Borland Walk there quite interesting Borland common name uh, in Stonehouse but actually I suspect the, the Borlands of Stonehouse actually originate from Glassford uh, and they go back to uh, about 1700 a wee bit earlier to the Reverend Francis Borland at Glassford and he had uh, the claim to fame of being the only minister that returned from the failed uh, ex colonial expedition of Scotland to try and form an empire uh, in Panama uh, 1700 and there was a, two, two expeditions and uh, Mr Borland went with one of those expeditions I think he went with the second expedition Aaron, Grande. He went with the second expedition, uh, I believe. Uh, but when he came back, uh, he actually got a book on his expedition and why it was a failure. Uh, and it cost Scotland probably a third of its wealth. And in some part, it actually led to uh, Scotland losing its independence. Uh, we'll look into that. Uh, Sorry, aye, aye. So that was Reverend Ireland. And uh, that's why you've got so many places which are named Borland. Just take a wee look around the, the hillside and uh, back down the road. So, uh, so there we go. I'll just take you up to the turn, show you where the turn is, so you know where you're going. And uh, then I'll get you uh, on the right way itself. So uh, it's not too far at all. In fact, funny thing is, Stonehouse is such a big parish. This is actually. <laughs> A shorter walks in many respects to one or two of the, the walks I've done during the, the lockdown. But as I say, you can now walk five miles, so I decided to come outside the parish now, a stone house, and uh, eventually just into the, the borderlands, <laughs> Glassford, and uh, I may even go as far as going to Sunny Double Surf or whatever parish. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so here we are. This is us at a turn. And on your right hand side, this is a road that actually takes you up to Avon Home House. Now Avon Home House, that's a, a private road at the end. Uh, we're not going to take that, we're actually going to follow the, the hill. I'll show you for the... For here. It actually follows that tree line all the way up there. And at the top, we take a right. So it's not too far at all. So that's you. So we're going to walk down here, take a wee... I'll walk it a wee bit, just to let you know. There you are. Aye. So it's a nice wee bit where the, the hedges about as well. I'm going to be see a wee bit of nature later on. Show you some of the plants you can eat. <laughs> some of the plants you can eat. Aye. So aye, get yourself up here. It's a lovely bit. You can actually see Sunny Stone House is just in the distance there. And uh, you get Tanto. And you're on distant hill there. I think that uh, comes for the Latin Hill of Fire, I think they're on. There it is. Okay. So, I'll catch you at the end in a wee bit. Aye, that's us at the bottom of uh, Tap Tool. Tap Tool is just up to the, the right hand side there. We'll get up to that uh, clump of trees, just uh, to the, the right of the camera there. Where uh, uh, there's uh, some prehistoric stones, or is there? Which is another thing. Uh, there's a sign here, excuse you, guidance, and also just down at the bottom here, there's a style to help you. However, worth noting, there are cows in the field here. What I'm going to do is follow the edge of that uh, fence there in case I have to cross over. Uh, as I say, it's not worth uh, taking the chance with cows. Stay well clear of them, don't go near them, uh, they can be dangerous. So, uh, without further ado, I'll get you up a wee bit further up the, 
the hill there uh, and we'll catch up with you there. Uh, but what not to do however is uh, you can walk to the end of that road but uh, it, there's a point where uh, it's a private road uh, and it's a lovely bit and that's where I've just come from. I've just come from along the road there which takes you up to Glassford. It's easy to find and a lovely wee bit of the countryside and Glassford's just through the, the trees there. Okay, so catch you up just as the sun comes out. Uh, catch you up when it's uh, a wee bit sunny up through the other side there. Bye for now. That's me just coming through the top end of the field there. Uh, wee bit of a climb. Not too bad. Uh, I mentioned Hall Hill earlier. That's it, uh, just at the top of the bray there. It's a chapel associated with it as well, which apparently goes back to Covenant and Times. Just keep a wee eye on the cows behind me. And that chapel, uh, it said that the owner of the property at the time, I believe he was actually on the other side of the Covenant and cause and was a bit of a scourge of the Covenanters in the area however, it might be worth adding that Covenanters weren't all good either uh, in fact uh, nearly uh, 40 years before the kind of killing times of the 1690s just before that uh, you had uh, the first ever Quakers in Scotland established themselves under a couple of gentlemen, one from Hamilton, I forget his name, but the other was John Hart of Heads Farm and uh, they, we think the Quakers came as a result of an English garrison which was set up at Straven Castle but the first Quaker uh, movement in Scotland started here in Glassford of all places Aye. And the Covenanters, uh, they used to persecute them uh, and they were hounded for their religious beliefs which is ironic because that's exactly what happened to the Covenanters uh, and uh, if you're in your Covenanters Glassford like any other town has got its own Covenanters uh, Doris and uh, I think it's William Gordon if I remember rightly who was killed in 1679 at the bottle, the bottle, <laughs> the battle of uh, Bothwell Brig, uh, or just after actually as he was escaping, out near uh, Darn Gabba, there's a stone marks the spot, there's Sunny Stonehouse, and uh, unfortunately they, they wouldn't let him take, uh, they, they wouldn't let the Covenanters take his body back to his home down in Galloway. And uh, so his body was actually brought here to Glassard, and there's a monument to him uh, at the, the Kirk there. So I get along, it's worth a, worth a wee a look, and there's some interesting stones there as well. What's interesting about the Kirk there is uh, it's, uh, it's got the old uh, tower there, the old Kirk tower, very similar to the one in St. Ninian's in Stonehouse. Where to us still there, there's fell down uh, some years ago. But uh, their grounds for their kirk uh, were actually consecrated with earth from the Stonehouse graveyard, as were other graveyards as well. It was believed that either Ninian or one of his followers the disciples actually set up a very early church on the Stonehouse site. So a lot of the surrounding villages thought uh, Stonehouse had this kind of old connection, so the, thus they consecrated the grounds with earth taken for Stonehouse and it happened with Glassford in 1633 when they built their kirk there so aye, when you get to here you can actually cut through the, 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 the fence here I'm going to just turn this off a wee second and uh, just dig over the fence because I've got stuck up a tree behind me <laughs> I'll need to detangle myself and uh, again what a view of Tinto back end of Stonehouse, you got West Mains there uh, the farm that is, and the estate looking down 
to the new Barrett estate, I think I called it Persimmons, one of the walks did he? Uh, route by towards uh, Sandford and the bike route, I can't quite see it. Anyway, so I'll catch you up at the stones. Hi, uh, here we are folks, uh, we're right at the, the pinnacle, you can see a tarped hill, and I think it just means tap hole the hill. Uh, I might be wrong. Uh, but there's signposts in here which clearly indicates to you uh, where you are now. There's a wee crossing point there. Uh, for those of a more robust nature, uh, you might want to actually take the one behind me, which I'll show you in a minute. I don't know if the sunlight's going to allow that to be seen there, but it just says Haven River this way, 10 minute walk, or the horse pool, 15 minute walk. Aye, so, I just looking around the hillside again, looking back. What a beautiful bit of Lanarkshire this is. Very underestimated. Underrated, I should say. <laughs> Aye, so that looks like a picnic bench. Yes, suppose you could use it as a picnic bench. But it's actually for, you can cross over the fence there and it just takes you into the stone. So that's what we're going to do now. And I'm just going to try and avoid phone in my RCM again. Wouldn't it be the first or the last? So, aye, cross over. It's surrounded by a wee metal fence there. And as soon as you get in, what you notice right away is it's surrounded by yew trees, which are religiously important because they're seen as evergreens and it's just to be further lasting. And uh, things you notice uh, immediately uh, you've got the graves here, uh, which are of the Strother family of uh, Aaron Home. Tablestones here as well. Unfortunately, what you will see very quickly is the uh, broken remnants of one of uh, the, sto the standard stones. Uh, unfortunately, it's been vandalised during the lockdown. Uh, if true indeed, they do come from prehistoric times, probably around about 2000 BC, possibly the Beaker people. These would have been here for 4,000 years, and unfortunately some jobs, I don't know how, much, how to say it, but uh, have actually destroyed a part of your history here, right, uh, between Stonehouse and Glassford. However, there's two that do remain here, and uh, three in total, uh, and what you've got on this one, uh, and I'm not sure if the, the, the line markings are natural or not. We do need to get archaeological uh, expertise up here to investigate this further. But it's got in the centre there what's called a cup mark. And that is typical uh, of standing stones. Uh, quite rare in uh, Lanarkshire. Uh, there, there are not many sites. Uh, but Glassford has got three of them here. Now what is interesting uh, about the stones is we're not actually sure that this is where uh, they originated uh, because there is a slight movement in the stone uh, and they don't seem to be too secure and it was thought uh, when I was doing some research that they might actually be a uh, Victorian folly which were put in by the Struthers uh, and I wrote to that effect in some uh, detail uh, but lo and behold after I'd written the book of course uh, a, a map was found, uh, which comes from, uh, I, think, I think it was even home, one of the folks there, uh, that's just in the distance, uh, and uh, it actually predates the Struthers being there. So, uh, I know it's just a, a, kind of a layered uh, map, it's, it's not a, an OS map, really, and, uh, and it dates uh, to around about uh, the kind of 1800, uh, but the, the, the building there, the actual if we can find it again in the camera. Uh, yeah, there we go. Avon Home, uh, built, I, think, I believe, in about 1808. Uh, Georgian House, uh, designed by Robert Adam. Fantastic. Uh, beautiful gardens as well. Love, lovely bit. But, uh, aye, so it's, it's on private land there, so you can't go into the, the, the property there. But aye, so whether or not this is uh, the original site, or whether they were put here by... Uh, Farmer uh, side of hill, we do not know, but we certainly need to get some archaeological uh, folks up here to try and understand it better. The other thing you've got here, I don't know if you can see it clearly with the, the sun there, we've got ruby, floss, and there should be another two. Now, 
Yeah, we've got Blanche. I'm trying to remember the name of the other dog. There was four dogs. Uh, and that's, that's the other uh, dog there. Uh, one of an old dog. Heidi. That's it, Heidi. And uh, unfortunately, it's been badly damaged by the the fire that's been created here. Uh, and there were the Struthers dogs. Uh, and they sort of thought it uh, such a lovely spot that that's where they uh, buried their dogs. Uh, no, just uh, well up here, uh, just at the back of the graveyard. Uh, I'll not go there today because I've got to take a wee walk by the hunting place. Just in the distance, uh, again, is uh, Glassburg. Right, you'll see the cemetery there, and that's where William Gordon buried. And also, there was another guy as well, I'm trying to remember his name now. Oh, the other Covenanter. John, John Semple, that's that, John Semple, Craig Thorne, he's buried there as well. Aye, it's a very ancient historic site. Again, just green rolling hills. It's a little, little bit land here. And definitely worth a dollar if you've not been here before. In fact, talking about ministers and Reverend Lang. He had a uh, member of his family called Cosmo Lang and uh, he actually became the Archbishop of Canterbury, Canterbury in the last. So, uh, so a few uh, distinguished uh, patrons of Glassford. In fact Annie Lennox is uh, the singer's uh, family originates for Glassford as well. In fact there's a few other guys just with on it. Uh, who's the other boy? Uh, Robert Hamilton. Guy Robert Hamilton, he came to Glassford and uh, like so many before him, uh, went to America to make his fortune. But uh, he actually uh, fought to establish Texas as an independent country and was one of the signatories to the Texas Declaration of Independence, would you believe it or not? So, aye, so, aye, lots, of, lots of famous folk. Right, so, without further ado, I'm going to have a, a quick eat of the banana there and uh, I'm going to actually cross over the field here so just give you a wee last look at the, the stones there absolutely amazing and again how many folk for the stone house area have actually been up here and seen them and there we go We're just looking down towards the horse pool and that's where I'm going right now. So I'll catch you at the other side. Hi, so that's us. Uh, I'm just across the fence here, looking down to Avon home, back of Stonehouse, up in the valley. There's a graveyard behind me there. And I'm just going to take a, a donor now uh, down towards, that's you, the, the horse pool down there. Aye. Uh, we've been there before, you know that well. Great local walk takes you up to home. I'm actually going to follow the, the river here for a while myself, uh, back to Stonehouse, because that's my, my journey kind of. That's as far as I'm going today, heading back to the village now. So I'll be catching you a wee bit at the end there, but I just wanted to take you up to the Glasser Stains. If you are following the river back, <laughs> you're going to have to cross it at some point unless you want to walk by the, 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 the home road uh, there, but uh, I mean possibly passing the cows. Uh, but uh, I'm actually getting into the river today. You just follow the edge of this uh, field here, uh, where the trees are, all the way down to the bottom there. Uh, when you get to the bottom, you have to cross a, a, a wee burn to the left hand side, which is not so easy, uh, and there are a few wee burns. It's a bit of an adventure, I enjoy it, but uh, it's not for the faint hearted. So if you get a chance, that's the way you're going, uh, if, if you do want to venture that way. Again, do wear boots, uh, probably more appropriate, it's still a wee bit wet underfoot with the water. But uh, aye, you, you would love it, but uh, aye, if you're a wee bit uh, in the fear side, uh, certainly take somebody away, uh, because it's, it's not the easiest bit to, to be crossing, but it's nice, it's nice. Okay, and uh, I'm going to cross the river itself, uh, and I'll catch you up at the, the end of the, 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 the road there. Okay, bye for now.